Hello, viewer. Welcome to our series of uh, uh, this uh, fellowship and also in this uh, uh, Bible study. It's also we are going on as God is revealing unto us, unfolding unto us uh, about his will. In our previous topic, uh, also we could uh, share and about and we saw about the situation. What was the situation uh, of this world before Jesus Christ came? And we found, and God has shown us that before uh, Jesus Christ came, uh, this world was flooded. You know, in this world there was was flooded by sin. There was sin all over, and sin and death. You know, so also there was the law which came in. So, because uh, sin came by Adam, and the law came through Moses, and these are some years apart, and then that is when Jesus Christ came, and uh, this is a situation that he found in this world, and this one is a hopeless, helpless situation, and he came at the right time. This is a very, you know, good situation. It, ima it matches uh, very well. And when Jesus Christ is seeing this, and also when we see this, there is uh, that hope. And we can see none, 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 none is righteous, no, not even one. This means what? All have seen and fallen short of the glory of God. So if all have seen, this means what? There is no one who is qualified to become a redemptive sacrifice for his own sin or another one. There is no any power, whichever, here or not. And that is why God sent Jesus Christ. Then Jesus Christ came. Then let's see, you know, he came, he's the Holy Son of God. Let's see. Now, <clears throat> uh, Jesus Christ, you know, he must prove or he must be proven a qualified sacrifice or a qualified uh, redemptive sacrifice of the sin of the world. Because there is none. Uh, let's see, what is he saying? There is this, we have this precious word. We have this voice of Jesus Christ. It is of hope. So every single person in this world should embrace these words. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7. Then I said, behold, I have come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do your will, O God. Jesus Christ has come in this volume of the book to do the will of God. Yeah, this volume of the book, uh, this one is the Bible from Genesis to Revelation because we have Old Testament and New Testament. So Old Testament, it's about you know, uh, prophesied, you know, the law, we have the law and the prophets. We have, you know, they, they are prophesying the Messiah, Jesus Christ, the Redeemer. And then because the world is in this helpless situation, cannot attain to that righteousness of God. Even though some, some did, but this is not according to the righteousness of God. It is the righteousness of man. And that is why God is saying, this one is, before the eyes of God, these are few the rags. Few the rags. No one is righteous, no, not even one. But what is God saying? Be holy, for I am holy. But how can you be? So this one means, you know, God wants the whole world to come to know the true image. Ah, what is my true image? I am a sinner 100%. I am in sin. I have not kept the law. I'm guilty of sin. I, can do any, I cannot do anything. I need that Savior. You know, this is a very hopeful situation. So it is not for me to do some part about my sin 
and also Jesus Christ to do some part. When Jesus Christ came, he did not find that like human beings had done something in their own sin. Then he came to fulfill the other one, to do the other part. Not so. 100%. No, none is righteous. Not, not, not even one. Yeah, so from Genesis to Revelation now, this one is the volume of book. Jesus Christ came because it is written of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the major character. And he came to do the will of God. So what is the will of God? The will of God is uh, our sanctification. And this sanctification is by the blood of Jesus Christ. And only by the blood of Jesus Christ. And this is the sacrifice that, that you know, that sacrifice that Jesus Christ revealed on the cross. So yeah, he came with this volume of the book to do the will of God, to accomplish everything that was prophesied in the Old Testament. He came to fulfill. Even though he came, yes, he is a holy son of God, born after the seed of the woman. Yeah, even though he came with this likeness of this flesh, but he did not know sin, he did not commit any sin, he did not break any law. Holy son of God. He overcame, you know, every single temptation. So even though he came uh, as a son of God and to fulfill the will of God in this volume of the book, but he must be proven. He must become a qualified, he must qualify to become a redemptive sacrifice for the sin of the world. Because there is no one in the world has qualified to become a redemptive sacrifice for his own sin or another person's. Now, it is only Jesus Christ. It is only Jesus. So he must be tested. And, th and that is why we, we can see in the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 9, and having been made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Yeah. And having been perfected, you know. There is one. How Jesus Christ is a son of God, no sin, but why should he be perfected? You know, he's perfect. He's a son of God without any single sin. He not no sin. He did not commit any sin. But then, why should he be perfected? This means what? For him to qualify to become a redemptive sacrifice of sin of the world, of the whole mankind, he must be proven. And this in, he must under, under, undergo some tests. He must be tested, one, by sin. Two, law. Three, death. He must be tested by this. He must be proved so that he qualifies to become a redemptive sacrifice for the sin of the world. So we, let's see how was he tested by sin. We can see uh, in the book of uh, Luke chapter 4, uh, there was the devil who came the devil came to him uh, and tempted him in the wilderness. But then he overcame every single temptation. So, pass. That one is pass. Okay, let's see from the book of First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 22. Who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth. No, who, who committed no sin? He, he did not commit any sin, neither was any girl found in his mouth. So he did not commit any sin. You know, committing, there is committing sin, 
and there is being born a sinner. You know, he was not born a sinner, he's the holy son of God. But then he was with like, like this flesh, and he was also born under the law. But he did not commit any sin. This means what? He did not break any law. He did not commit any sin, any single sin. So, according to sin, you know, that one is a pass. Pass. And then, what about the law? Then, he must be tested by the law. Okay, before this, let's see 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. In verse 5. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him there is no sin. And in him there is no sin. So he underwent even the childhood. He was born like you and me. And then, you know, for all those years... Even in the, 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 you know, when he was 30, when he began his ministry, then for three years or so. So at that three, this is when he was crucified on the cross. This is when he accomplished everything on the cross. So he did not, there was no sin found in him. You know, and you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. No sin at all. So, regarding being tested by sin, no, that one is a pass. He passed that one more than 100%. That is why he came in the likeness of this flesh. So that, you know, having passed that test of sin, then that sin has no any, any, complain has no anything like anything to, to say or like I, I have some you know you do not fulfill this or you have a debt during the, the day of judgment you know that master sin must not say anything or the mouth should be you know Closed. Lest anyone should accuse. No, no one should accuse about, about, no one should accuse you and me regarding sin. And in this, you know, Jesus Christ, you know, passed this. Let's see about the law. Romans chapter 10, verse 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. For Christ is the end of the law unto righteousness to everyone that believes. So this means what? When we come to Jesus Christ, he is the end of the law. This means what? Jesus Christ, you know, he did not commit sin. Committing sin is by breaking the law. But before we committed sin, we were born sinners. But, but sin, I mean, the law is demanding for the, the requirements also for, for its fulfillment. Because none will go, or not none, you know, this, this heaven and the earth will not pass without one single dot, one single tittle of the law before it is fulfilled. So the law is demanding its, its, its requirements. And also so that can be fulfilled. But then on our behalf, that is why Jesus Christ said, I did not come to break the law or the prophets, but I came to fulfill. So Jesus Christ is the end of the law. The law has come to the end. The law has no power. It is the end of the law. It has ceased to have any power. Why? Because Jesus Christ fulfilled from the beginning up to the end. So Jesus Christ walked all the way. See here. He walked all the way from the beginning to the end of the law without breaking. He passed without breaking. 
he passed. Because you and me, we, we did not keep the law. We didn't keep, we, we, we didn't keep the law. We broke the law. I, in the book of James chapter 2, verse 10 and 11, it says what? You know, if you keep the whole law and offend in one point, then for whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. Why? Verse 11. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So he who say don't commit adultery, but if you don't commit adultery and you kill, then you have broken the whole law. And that is why verse 10 says what? Uh, it says, for whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point is guilty of all. He has broken all. So none of us, none of you and me who has kept the, 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 the law. None. And that is why the words of Jesus Christ are true according to uh, John chapter 7 verse 19. Did not Moses give you the law? And yet none of you has kept. None of you. None of you. No one. That is why there is no one who is righteous. No, not even one. But people, they are just finding themselves. Oh, because of this, because of this, oh, because of this, I'm going, I receive mercy before God because of this, because of their own works. They are blasphemers because they are only focusing in themselves. They are cheated. They are deceived by Satan the devil. Lest they believe in Jesus Christ. So, Jesus walked all the way from the, the first law to the end without breaking. Without breaking. Every one of us, we broke the law. No one can claim that he kept because it is evident in the word of God. Now let me ask a question. A question comes to you. You answer silently in your heart. No. Between now, between you and the law, who is more strong there is the law, Ten Commandments, and you are there. So, who is strong? You know, I don't know the answer you are having, but you may, may be having one of these. You may, you may be having this, that you are stronger than the law. You are more strong than the law. But then, have you ever broken the law? Yes, you broke. Then why did you break the law? Is it because you are strong? You are the one who is strong and the law is weak? Or the law is strong and you are weak? If you broke, then you are strong than the law. If you ever broke one single law, then you are strong than the law. Because if the law was strong than you, then you could have kept, you could not, you know, you could not have broken. For example, if the law was like uh, a very strong, you know, in, you know, uh, metal or metallic chain, you know, uh, and you are just, uh, you know, you are just fitted you are tied and then rocked. And then whenever you try, you know, you cannot break. You cannot free yourself. Why? Because that, you know, iron chain is stronger than you. But if that chain is weak, you are strong, then you break. You break. For example, if I'm used to stealing, and then whenever, whenever I'm, I'm told, hey, you don't, don't do, don't do this. You know, I remember when I was a young boy, you know, I, 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 I was used to stealing, like, sugar. I knew where my, 
my mother kept sugar and I liked milk. I was brought up by milk. So there was big sufuria of milk. And I liked the top layer. It is cream, you know, when I put in the, in the, you know, I put in the cup and put some sugar and just tear. I liked it those days. You know, we didn't have yogurts like nowadays, so I think that was yogurt, homemade yogurt. And so I was used to this. So when my mother was going to uh, the market, it was very far, so he could take almost the whole day. And then I knew, because he could walk a distance before he could get uh, those buses those days. Those buses and uh, those, those box, you know, matatus. So I knew now he has, she has gone up to somewhere. Then I started my own mission, and then I entered in the car, cupboard, and then, shh, and then milk. And then first I was getting some one ca one 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 spoon of of, of, of sugar, so I can get energy, the power to climb up up there because they kept the, the the milk up there. So when I had just taken one, and then I think she forgot something. <laughs> And then I, I just saw the door was just pam, and she's there. And she's looking at me like, what are you doing? Then I was like, hey, no, nothing, 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 nothing. But I had all the whatever of sugar around. That time, until today, I remember. I was beaten <laughs> until today. And then every time she was going, she was telling me, hey, and you remember to steal sugar. And you remember. Hmm? But however, she told me, but even if she, if she had gone somewhere to, to visit the auntie and what, you know, I just went back to my habits. Why? Because I was used to that. So even though she, I was given, for her saying, remember to do this, this means don't do that. Don't do that. So it is the law saying don't do. But I'm used to. So even though I was tied with this law, but I was stronger than this law. It is the same to the law of God. It is the same to the Ten Commandments. Let's see, you know, when we see in the book of Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8 and verse 3. For what the law could not do in that it was weaker through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. So, here says what? For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. What could, the law could not prevent me and you from stealing. The law could not prevent you and me from killing. Why? Because this law was weak through the flesh. So God sent Jesus Christ to bring to the end of the law. So his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. Yes. So uh, Jesus Christ, you know, uh, he came because we could not be able to keep the law. So he kept the law all the way. From the beginning, he walked all the way. From the beginning to the end, without breaking. And that is where we should applaud him. Oh, hallelujah. You have passed that test. So, because we could not break, we could not uh, keep the law. We couldn't. Because... The law is weak. We are strong. We break and we go and we steal. We break and we go and do this. We break and we go and do this. And you should know this. The law is not broken twice. There is no second chance. God did not give a second chance. He said, if you break one, you are broken all. And that's over. Period. So, there is no second chance. So, the law is like a glass. 
a glass. I'm sorry, let me demonstrate. I have a glass here, I'm sorry. It is just a glass of water. Yeah, so the law is like a glass. So, if, if I just leave it to drop, you know, maybe from this height, and then pop to the ground, then it will be broken. And then, how many times should it be broken? It is just once. There is no second chance. Also, okay, let us give her another second. No, it has been, it has broken, and that is over. We need a new one. So, the law is like glass. You don't have second, you break one time, you're in the record of, of, of that law breakers. That is why Jesus Christ said, no, not even one. No, not even one. So it is just one. But people they are saying, I'm trying to keep the law. I'm trying to keep the law. That is, that is your own gospel. That's about, it's, this is according to you. According to your deceptive, that mind which has deceived you. It is once. When you broke one, when you are born into this world, when I was born in this world, I broke one. I should not try. That's over. Yeah, so Jesus Christ passed this. So in the second, in the, in the next session, we are going to see uh, also how he became a qualified redemptive sacrifice of sin. As also he passed this test. And that is why in the book of Hebrews say, was perfected. He is our hope. Thank you very much. Let's meet in the other session. God bless you.